Good evening and a very warm welcome to you all to Evensong this evening. This evening we are uh, continuing with our congregational psalm singing, so I hope you will join in with the psalm. You should have a copy of the psalm with the music as well, which should have been given to you as you uh, came into church. And just to say that after the service, there will be drinks uh, at the Cross Isles if you'd like to stay and have a drink uh, with us after the service. And welcome to everybody else who is joining us on Zoom as well. We begin our service this evening with our opening hymn, number 383. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do 
when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> standing as we sing Psalm 139 verses 1 to 18, which can be found on the sheet.
first reading is taken from the book of Proverbs, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them round your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favour and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh <coughs> and a refreshment for your body. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is taken from the first letter of John, the third chapter beginning at the first verse. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. 
And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. <clears throat> the Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born of God do not sin, because God's seed abides in them. They cannot sin, because they have been born of God. The children of God and the children of the devil are revealed in this way. All who do not do what is right are not from God, nor are those who do not <coughs> love their brothers and sisters. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must be like Cain, who was from the evil one, and murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. Here ends the second reading. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 
for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Choir sing the anthem Lead Me Lord by SS Wesley. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the forefront of the world's concerns this week has been and continues to be the situation in Palestine and the horrors that are being played out in that troubled region, the region that has had religious significance and conflict for millennia. I remember having pointed out to me that Israel, on a world map, appears as the linking part of the East and the West, not unlike the part of the brain called the corpus callosum, which joins the left and right hemispheres together. This is a vital communication bridge between the two sides of the brain. No wonder Jesus appeared in this important part of the world. Still today, there is a huge need for the message that he came to make us aware of and to urge us to work towards. 
This evening's psalm and readings all work together to express something of the heart of that message. A message our world so constantly fails to understand or live out. Expressed in one word, if I had to boil it down to that, it would be wisdom. Wisdom. Our Old Testament reading from Proverbs uh, was all about wisdom. Our need to not forget the Lord's teaching. Our need to keep his commandments. Perhaps foremost of all, to love one another as he has loved us. As Psalm 139 declares with such awe, and as John in his first letter stresses, how great is the love that the Father has lavished on us. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Such knowing is surely not the knowledge we can know with our minds, but the wisdom we can only be aware of and perceive, if we care to do so, with our hearts. There are two ways of knowing, each which is attributed to the two different hemispheres of the brain. The one is associated with our conscious thinking mind, where thoughts are represented by us in a linear, logical fashion. The other is associated with our powers of perception, way beyond our thinking mind and its comprehension whose powers are so far beyond our understanding that we often refer to it, as the Bible certainly does, as relating to the heart. Heart meaning much more than the complex physical organ that it is. The first sort of knowing is about the sort of factual knowledge that has been thought of as scientific and provable and which is prized by our society. This is the way of the world. This is the sort of knowing that is the cause of so much pain and trouble in our world. This is the knowing that hangs on to the past and refuses to let go. <coughs> hence long generational conflicts, that thinks it knows what is right and what is wrong, and hence is always at the root of conflict. Whereas the second sort of knowing is about not simply factual knowledge that we can pin down, but about wisdom. I'll let you finish first. You first. I will do, yes. Thank you. Okay. This second sort of knowing is about not simply factual knowledge that we can pin down, but about wisdom. Wisdom which perceives truth beyond our own short-sighted judgments and self-interests. Wisdom which is encapsulated in the sort of love we are commanded to love with. The love which ensures we love one another as brothers and sisters, members not of this group or that group, but of the human race. And this applies not just to big conflicts as the long-standing Palestinian one, but to those sitting next to each one of us, here and now, 
even in church. Listening again to what for me is the most instructive sentence of scripture that is so simple and yet so difficult to act upon. It comes from our Old Testament reading from Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and you could add verse 6 also. It goes like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In other words, that is the wisdom that I've been referring to. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In other, in other words, the limited knowledge that we are only capable of with our minds of knowing goes on in verse 6 to say, in all your ways acknowledge him, in other words, wisdom, and he will make straight your paths. The wisdom and love needed in the Pan Palestinian situation, and indeed in all conflicts, where what we think we know or think is right is made subject to the far greater wisdom that comes from a deeper place within us and always creates that peace that surpasses all understanding. Such is the peace that Jesus came to offer. Peace so badly needed in the places where he came and preached. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we stand to sing our next hymn, which is hymn number 341. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord God of all, of Abraham, Sarah, Hagar, Isaac and Ishmael. 
Our hearts are broken at the suffering and murder of your people. Our voices cry for peace and for justice. It is with shock and horror we witness the devastating violence and loss of life in Israel-Palestine over recent days. We come to you as the source of all comfort, asking that you send your spirit to surround and uphold all those who are grieving, all those who are suffering, all those in fear, and all those in captivity. May the arms of comfort and compassion overwhelm the arms of war. We come to you as the source of all peace, asking that you send your spirit to strengthen and uphold those pursuing an end to violence. Embolden those with a heart for truth and justice. And amplify, amplify voices of wisdom and restraint. May the light of peace and reconciliation overwhelm the darkness of destruction. We come to you as the source of all hope, asking that you send your spirit to bring about a future where neighbours embrace despite their differences, where love conquers hate. Humility surpasses pride, and where forgiveness is treasured as a fundamental strength. May the hope of a day when weapons of conflict will be transformed into tools of reconciliation be realised soon. So there will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things will have passed away. Send us your wisdom in all that we say and do, that our voice may always seek justice, peace, and security for all. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers and for others whom we hold upon our hearts. We pray for Jane Johnson, Darren Gooch, Ian Kenyon, Brian Underwood, Hanny van der Plaats, Christopher Surfleet, Jason Easton, Cynthia Jackson, and Victor Sylvester. Watch thou, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep tonight, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend thy sick ones, Lord Christ. Rest thy weary ones. Bless thy dear dying ones. Soothe thy suffering ones. Pity thine afflicted ones. Shield thy joyous ones. And all for thy love's sake. Amen. Continue to pray for those who have died recently. Christine Allen and Christine Ross, Michael Welby, Caroline O'Brien, 
Teresa Nielsen, Erica Pointer, Mark Donovan, John Rose Miller, and Anthony Gregory. And for those whose year's mind falls at this time, we pray this week for Basil Keith Moulton, Rose Mary Hederick, and Frederick David Hunter Hederick, for Mary War, for George Patrick Rose Miller, Gladys Ayscoff, for Stuart Lawton, and Sheila Mary Brewer. May your loving arms surround those who mourn them, and may they rise in glory and rest in peace. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Is it we beseech thee, O Lord, our homes, and drive far from them all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell therein to preserve us in peace, and let thy blessing always be upon us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, number 357. 357. Peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>